Hello, my hojos, and welcome to this super original video idea that I came up with myself. And if you've seen anyone before me film a video like this, they stole it from me and they just didn't know it yet. That's right. I'm going to be doing the revolutionary idea of answering questions. <laughs> I've had someone ask me if I would ever do a Q&A video before. And I was like, uh, I don't know if I would do that. Maybe I'll do it. Um, so then I just kind of like fielded questions and you guys gave me some really good questions. I was just kind of nervous that most of the questions would be pretty basic and I've like said them the answers before, but no, you guys gave me some really interesting questions. So thank you for that. I am excited to get into these. This is also going to be like my first unscripted video. I literally just have the questions and a couple of notes in front of me but I don't have like an exact idea of what I'll be saying. So if I ramble on a lot, I apologize. You're gonna be hearing me in my like usual speaking tone. <laughs> so let's go ahead and dive right into the questions you guys have for me. This is just going to be a very chill, relaxed video. So enjoy, let's get into it. The first question was, how do you take your coffee? For me, I usually take it black. Sometimes I put a little bit of oat milk in it too. I just like the, I like the taste of coffee. So I drink it a lot. And I don't know if that's good or not because <laughs> it is quite a bit of caffeine. I could probably drink three to four cups in a day and I'm not super wired. I'm just like, hmm, coffee. For the next question, have you ever felt burnout? Like you don't want to read manga anymore? If yeah, how did you recover? So that's a really good question because I am actually currently feeling some burnout right now with reading manga. I'm trying to reread Chihaya Furu right now and I'm doing 10 chapters at a time and I wanted to be done by October, but I just, I cannot read that much in one day because on top of those 10 chapters, I am reading other manga as well. And that's about three to four volumes of like different series every day can't do that. I, my brain just turns to mush. This video, I'm basically doing a Q and A because I was like, I want to do a video, but like, I don't have any topics to talk about. And my brain, like I said, my brain is just turning to mush lately. So I just needed something to relax and not think or analyze something as much anymore. How am I recovering? I would say the best thing to do is just take breaks. It could be a couple of days. It could be a week or two, but just like don't force yourself to read. Don't feel like you have to be reading constantly. I know it seems pretty obvious, but don't force yourself to do something if you are feeling like you cannot comprehend what is going on. I think that is a good like marker of, hey, maybe I'm like reading too much and I need to just chill for a bit. All right, next question. Have you tried reading A Girl and Her Guard Dog? If you have, did you also not like it? There are a lot of people hating it, but I'm on the neutral side of things, so I want your opinion about it. As for another question, in case you haven't read the manga yet, what are your fall anime watch list? So to answer the first question, A Girl and Her Guard Dog is a Betsu Frey shoujo manga series that is going to be getting an anime adaptation next next year. I almost said next season, not next season, next year. So the thing about that series is I, <laughs> I could not get into it, first of all. I think I read three chapters, so I really didn't get that far. However, the series is about the 16 year old who was raised in a Yakuza family after her parents died. And the guy who raised her in the family is a 26, 27 year old dude. And he's super possessive of her. He basically raised her. So yeah, personally, did not like the series, couldn't keep reading. Obviously, I only read three chapters, so maybe other people like it more. I just couldn't get into it. I'm probably not gonna watch the anime. It's just, it's weird. It's a weird series. Power to you guys if you can watch it, not for me. However, to answer my fall watch list, I am watching Golden Camelie season four, uh, the second core of Spy Family. Today is Chainsaw Man day of the day I'm filming. So I'm going to be starting Chainsaw Man, Mob Psycho 100, Bibliophile Princess, 
Raven of the Inner Court, and I'm the villainess, and I'm taming the final boss. I have a pretty full plate for my anime watch list this season, especially when it compares to last season when I literally didn't watch a single thing. I did not watch a single series. <laughs> What tips would you have for ladies who would want to make more in-depth videos about anime and discussing not-so-fun topics? I've seen other female creators try to do similar and get dragged by other creators from both sides. Like, how did you prepare yourself knowing you might get some, or a lot, of backlash? First of all, thank you so much for asking me that. That was a really great question. And also just the fact that anyone asked me that and like wants advice from me is just really cool. So I hope I can answer this in a good way that can like help people. Going into a video or going into a topic that is, you know, kind of divisive or you know that trolls are gonna try to come for you online, I think you really have to go into to it knowing that you are probably going to get backlash no matter what and especially from opposing parties so like for my misogyny video of course I knew I was gonna get dudes who were not so happy about what I was saying and obviously like going into something knowing that you are going to get backlash and you are going to get hate comments is never super easy so definitely like make sure that you've prepared yourself for the day when you know it's going to drop. For me, I had the weekend before I knew my video was gonna go out and I was like, okay, that day I know I'm going to post the video, I'm gonna go for a walk, I'm going to listen to a podcast and I'm gonna have my, my two moderators, also get moderators by the way, that was super helpful but I'm gonna have my two moderators take care of the comments section and look through things for me so I don't exhaust myself. Just kind of preparing myself mentally for, you know, possibly a shit show. And while yes, uh, like overall, I was so surprised about how positive the feedback on that video was, it still was just very mentally draining, especially afterwards when I didn't really need to have moderators for my comment section anymore because it kind of, you know, uh, the, the hype died down, if you will. But you still get a lot of like, well-meaning people who like think that they're helping you out by critiquing the way that you speak about a topic that you're passionate about. You do get a lot of that and that almost affects you more than just someone saying, <laughs> you're a lost little girl. <laughs> Probably my favorite comment I got on that video, by the way. You know, it almost makes it harder because people are like, you didn't say this correctly, so actually everything you said is now invalid in my mind, or oh, I didn't like your script, so everything you said is actually not that great and I don't have to listen to you. You know, little jabs like that, it almost makes it harder to like not let that get to you because they're like critiquing not even critiquing, criticizing your intelligence and your way that you speak and like <laughs> basically you. So that that is very hard and you're gonna have to balance that. I was, I had a really hard time two weeks after my video dropped because, you know, I started seeing more stuff about me, but overall, in the end, it was very positive and I'm very thankful for that. I think as long as you are happy with what you've made you're happy with your decisions, you're uplifting people, you're trying to help people, then I don't think you need to worry about how others are going to perceive you, especially if you can just kind of say in your mind, well, of course they're mad because I'm calling them out. What are your thoughts on the portrayal of men in shoujo manga? I feel like everyone talks about the portrayal of women in shoujo a lot, but I'm interested in hearing some analysis of the men in shoujo. This is such a fun question. See, this is what I mean. You guys asked such great questions. I was like, just, I was surprised. I shouldn't be. You guys are probably all very intelligent, great people. <laughs> to answer this is kind of hard because, you know, you do have not so great male characters in shoujo and you have amazing excellent male characters in shoujo i think overall shoujo and jose basically have my favorite male characters ever though you know like 
Taichi Mashima from Chihaya Furu, favorite male character of all time ever. And then after that, Shuri from Basara and Hananoi from A Condition Called Love. They're all just like super nuanced, complex characters that are able to show their emotions. They're able to be not great people. They're able to be great people. I think men in shoujo are often allowed to have more emotions and be more vulnerable and we get to see their inner thoughts more and they're just very complex characters half the time. And this makes it easier to empathize and connect with them as well, which is why I think I connect with male characters in Shoujo and Jose more than I do in other demographics. Would love to hear about how you source your physical copies. I know you covered this a bit in your shelf tour, but would love hot tips, especially for finding old stuff. Second hand bookstores always check a secondhand bookstore. Even if you think that the bookstore is not even gonna have manga, still check it because you never know. There is a secondhand bookstore that was right by my house and I was like, I'll just walk in, we'll see what's in there. That is how I found volumes one through nine of Basara for $35. Always check a local bookstore. <laughs> um, other than that, definitely check Alibris and Thrift Books. Both of those are pretty cheap. However, the shipping can get pretty expensive. I've kind of stopped ordering from Alibris and Thrift Books just because the shipping is so expensive. But if you're looking for older series, those are decent places to find things for pretty cheap. Right Stuff Anime is another great site to um, get older series. So yeah. <laughs> if you were to write a shoujo or jose manga, what would the basic premise be? Thank you so much for this question. This is so fun. So actually, back in high school, I made a manga. I made three chapters of it. It was very, very bad. The premise was like, it's a romance drama series where the girl uh, lives with her older sister and their parents abandon them, basically. And she lives with her older sister and her older sister can't take care of her all the time because she's a handful. So what the older sister does is she pays her neighbor to be friends with her and the girl doesn't know about this. So those two are friends and she thinks that they're just friends because they're friends, but he He's actually getting paid to be friends with her. And then it's like, oh no, when is she gonna find out? <laughs> when is she gonna find out that her best friend is getting paid? And oh my gosh, he has a crush on her, so he kind of feels bad about getting paid, but he's so poor, so he needs some money. Super fucking corny, super fucking cheesy, very bad. I was not good at proportions back then, so. I think if I were to make a manga series now, however, I would probably still wanna make it a romance drama series because I really like romance drama series. And I think romance dramas are a great way to tell very human stories. And that's what I would kinda wanna do. I think my idea would be something to do with how insecurities can affect your relationships and how letting your insecurities get the best of you can make you a not so great person. I find that complexity for a female character isn't seen very often. I think it would be really fun to do a series about a high school girl who is trying to navigate her relationships and trying to navigate, you know, growing up as a teenager and finding herself while also being incredibly insecure and not having great mental health. Um, kind of, you know what? That kind of sounds like Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. But no, I just, I feel like that would be a really great story and especially for teenage girls who kind of are meant to feel bad about their insecurities, like having insecurities. But yeah, this is something I've personally struggled with. So while I'm not like an expert on this topic, I feel personally connected to a topic like this. And I think in manga form, it could be really fun. Guess a little off subject, but do you pre-plan out your compositions for your photography? Saw some of your fashion stuff and it is so well balanced. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just gonna thank every single person for a question. You guys are just so nice. So I've mentioned it a couple times now, but uh, my main thing I do is freelance fashion photography. What that entails is usually portfolio shoots for new models, 
Sometimes I do lookbooks for company products. Sometimes I do e-com for company products. Sometimes I work with designers. So I'm really kind of all over the place when it comes to fashion photography. Pre-planning my shoots isn't really something I do when it comes to portfolio shoots or if it's a shoot that someone else is paying me for. Um, usually I only pre-plan my compositions to an extent when it comes to my creative work, my editorial work that I have come up with myself. Basically what I do is I will sketch out the pose that I have in my head or the idea that I have in my head. I really don't do it that often, but if I have a creative shoot in my head and I'm like, ooh, that's a really good idea, that would be a really cool pose. I'll try to sketch it out to make sure that I get that pose shot. If you had to direct a shoujo magazine that is up to eight monthly series, which series would be the best examples of what you would portray as a perfect shoujo magazine? So I don't know about perfect. Obviously everyone is gonna have different ideas of what they want shoujo to be. For me personally, my favorite magazines have been Lala Hanato Yume and Dessert Magazine lately. So I really would like a good healthy mix of like fantasy action series, as well as some good old high school romance. I would definitely want the age for the magazine to be around 17 to 19. Like as the main reader base, obviously it could go up a little bit, it could go down a little bit. But I think for me, the perfect shoujo magazine would be something around the late teenage uh, demographic with a lot of good fantasy and a lot of good romance in it. I think for my eight series, what I'm going to go with is Natsume's Book of Friends, Snow White with the Red Hair, Basara, Colette Decides to Die, A Condition Called Love, You Got Me Senpai, Kimi ni Tadoke. Ooh, you know what? Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles. I know that one's not a shoujo, but I think it would be really cool to have a shoujo like Tsubasa. Especially, you know, you guys know I love my world building. <laughs> but yeah, I just think that would be like my perfect shoujo magazine. Once again, another really fun question. Thank you guys, thank you. <laughs> now that Yuki Suetsugu is mostly done with Shihaya Furu, what kind of new series are you hoping she'll write next? <laughs> That is so fun. So I've actually talked about this before. I would love Yuki Suetsugu to make a historical drama romance series. Maybe there's a little action in it, but oh my gosh, it would just be so great if she could do something like that. She draws like such beautiful kimonos and hakama and just the way that she like draws the action shots of the Karata games, I feel is just like perfect in like a historical setting. And I know for the most part, she mostly just does like present day real world romance series, but I think she would do so good with a historical series. What I'm particularly thinking of is if she did something kind of like Kazuhikaru, I feel like oh, it would be amazing for her. It would be amazing. <laughs> I'm just like picturing it with a couple of those panels in the later half of the series. So this is spoiler, spoilers for Chihaya Furu after like where season three ends off. But the ones of like Shinobu and Chihaya where they're pictured walking up the mountain, just, oh, it would be gorgeous if we could get some cool. I'm just gonna say it. Give us a historical romance drama series, Yuki Suetsugu, please. I've seen many of your suggestions for series that you'd like to be picked up from US distributors. How do you discover new series from Japan? The best way to discover new series is follow magazines on Twitter, check my anime list on like where series come from in magazines because my anime list has a tag of like certain magazines that a series was published in. And then also I would heavily suggest following Manga Mogura Ri. They are just a bountiful resource of new series that are coming out. They always are posting like covers for new volumes of series and covers for magazines of series. And that's where I find a lot of new shoujos that aren't talked about as much or don't have like other ways to read online. That's how I found Futari de Koi Wosu Ryu. That's how I found Furare girl, I'm pretty sure. Definitely follow Manga Mogura Ri because 
Just great resource for any new shoujos. Would you ever make videos about shonen manga? Here's the thing. I don't mind that you have asked this question and there's no hate at all. However, I do wonder if shonen creators have ever gotten a question asking if they would ever talk about shoujo manga. I have made it pretty clear that I am a shoujo content creator. It's just very funny to me that I often get the question of, uh, are you ever going to talk about shonen? My real answer though uh, is never say never. Uh, maybe I'll talk about a shonen series someday. My name on here is Colleen's Manga Rex. It's not Colleen's Shoujo Rex. So I am free to talk about shonen whenever I want. Um, I'm just not reading any shonen that like makes me want to analyze it right now. You know, I'm reading Sakamoto Days and Spy Family and Akane Banashi. And while those are all great series, I'm not like wanting to analyze it in depth. I, I don't feel like I have anything to say about them. They're fun, they're cool, but I just don't have anything further than that. Um, so never say never. For now, I'm content with doing shoujo content. On that note, what's your opinion on shonen romance manga and anime? Like Kaguya, Komi, Horimiya, etc. I think with like any genre, I like some and I don't like others. I don't really like passionately hate shonen romance or anything. There's definitely some in the shonen romance genre that I enjoy. My favorites currently are Even If I Slip My Mouth, which is a manga plus series. And it's not recently, it's just kind of like a shonen romance I like, but Horimiya is another one of my big favorites. Um, but the thing with shonen romance series is they go on forever. They do not need to go over a hundred chapters. I read one volume of Komi. It wasn't really my favorite. I read up to 200 chapters of Kaguya. It just ran so long that I got bored of it. Mm, I'm trying to think of what else I've tried. I've tried Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie and there just wasn't enough happening in that one for me. Tried reading My Dress Up Darling, a little too. <laughs> Take that as you will. <laughs> but the real reason I'm just not as into shonen romance is just the way it handles romance isn't for me. Other people might like how they do it, but personally, I really like intimate connected moments, really intimate emotional moments. And I feel like you don't get that as much with shonen romance. Uh, I've said this in my What is Shoujo video, but shonen romance often tend to put the romance to the side and they have something else that is more of the focus. So like comedy is more of the focus or I don't know, something else is more of the focus. I'm just not going to be, I'm just not going to be into a series like Comey where there's just not much happening or a series like Rent a Girlfriend where it's clearly, <laughs> clearly not made for me. Do you read the Shoujo and Jose magazines you get from Japan? No. <laughs> I cannot read Japanese. I, I can't. I can only speak English. I'm pretty sure that's obvious to a lot of people who are always getting mad at how I say things because I don't know how to say things in the original Japanese way of saying it. I can't read Japanese. Can't speak Japanese. For anyone who doesn't know, they mean these magazines. I have a Be Love magazine, a Margaret magazine. I cannot read these. I buy them mostly just for the covers, uh, especially if it's a cover from a series that I really like. This one's Konojo ga Kawaii Sugite Ubenai. I love this series. It is so good. It just finished recently though. Usually where I get these is from Kino Kaniya, the one that's closest to me. Sometimes has the magazine sitting out on the racks. And I think the other thing you can do, I asked them recently and they were like, oh yeah, you can get a subscription to these magazines with us. So I think you're able to do that if you call whatever Kino Kaniya is closest to you and you can like set up a subscription to like dessert magazine and they'll get the monthly issue of the new dessert magazine straight from Japan. However, if you're looking for individual magazines, I know a friend of mine likes to get individual Chihaya Furu cover magazines. She gets those, I think, either from CD Japan or eBay. But those are three different places that you can buy manga magazines from if you're interested in doing that. What bands have you been listening to? Unfortunately, I am a dirty, filthy K-pop stan. <laughs> So I don't listen to, I don't listen to a lot of music outside of K-pop anymore. For K-pop groups that I really enjoy, it's like Shiny, and I really love Key's new solo album, um, Blackpink, really enjoyed that new album as well. Wiki Mickey, 
Hopefully we get a comeback soon. <laughs> For like non-K-pop music, I really don't listen to like bands anymore, like just a single band. I kind of listen to just singles that I found, um, one of which is New Hope Club, Getting Better. I think that's what it is. Love that song. Um, the whole Arcade Fire album that they just released, I think it was, it was a couple months ago now, but great album. Love that album. It is so good. And then I just found this one artist called Hodera recently. There's this one song called Breathe Easy that I'm just obsessed with. It's got this really just kind of like it's got a vibe to it that just makes me feel like I'm sitting outside in an empty woods and like staring at the stars. <laughs> and I will mention my favorite band of like all time is System of a Down. So I'm really all over the place when it comes to music. What are some series you would like to see return that have been partially released, but the publishers never finished? Oh my gosh, I have three. I have three really big ones. The first of which is Crimson Hero. I love that series so much. I haven't been able to buy any of the volumes yet, but there's 20 in total, I believe, and they only released 13 in English. So upset about that. And I really hope like, Maybe someday we'll get a new omnibus release or something of Crimson Hero. It is a fantastic volleyball manga. I will probably be putting that into a uh, Shonen Jump to Shoujo video soon, but Crimson Hero is amazing. Would love a return of that one. My next option is Gaku and Alice, which has 31 volumes in total, but we only got 16 in English because it was from Tokyo Pop, which I think went under during the release of Gaku and Alice. Apparently, it is up for license. That's what I saw on Wikipedia. So someone please, please license Gaku and Alice. I want to finish this series again. And then my last one is kind of stupid because they only didn't release the last volume. However, I would like more easy access to Ghost Hunt. We need the entirety of Ghost Hunt. The series is so good and I would love a re-release of it. It is such a good series. It would have been great if we could get a re-release for Spooky Season. However, re-release of Ghost Hunt, we need the last volume. Oh boy. <laughs> Since Shoujo Beat has been a dead horse for a while, which English printer do you think has replaced them as having the best selection of Shoujo titled in English? Here's the thing. I don't think Shoujo Beat is yet to be replaced for having the best selection of Shoujo titles because since they are the Shoujo publisher and they have like the biggest titles right now, you know, like Skip Beat and Natsume's and uh, Yona of the Dawn and Snow White with the Red Hair, I think it's gonna be a while before other publishers can catch up to that. And we're kind of just waiting right now for that catch up. What I think, we should look out for is Seven Seas. They've just got a wealth of new shoujo manga coming out. None of them are going to be like heavy hitters like Yona of the Dawn or Kamisama Kiss, but they are really picking up smaller titles that I have been wanting to read for a while. So that series, like, I wrote these down, so let me go ahead and read these. So Do Not Say Mystery, Cinderella Closet, My Girlfriend's Child, The Eccentric Doctor of the Moonflower Kingdom. They have all of these series coming out um, currently or will be coming out soon. And I think that just really is solidifying them as being like a good alternative to Shoujo Beat. Obviously they don't, like I said, they don't have the heavy hitters, but they do have some smaller series that I'm very excited about. We might be seeing some good heavy hitters in the Seven Seas lineup for Shoujo. I mean, even with the last two licensing announcements they've done, they've given us one Shoujo out of three every single time. And that's like more than I can say with a lot of other publishers. I do also think Kodansha is doing amazing. I've said it multiple times now, they license so many good series. The only issue is that they're all digital usually. They do release, you know, some out in physicals, but not the ones that I would like to see. Uh, so that's like, you know, You Got Me Senpai, Chihaya Furu, and Changes of Heart. They just have so many good series, but they're all locked away behind digital jail. So like, it's great for people who like reading digitally, but for me who likes physically collecting, I feel like Seven Seas is doing a good job on that realm. And then for Kodansha, they're doing a good job for digital. Combining them together, I think we've got we've got two companies that are that are working in our favor right now. All right, and here are the final two questions. Let's get into it. What is one series you would like to see get the fruits basket treatment for anime? One 
thousand percent Basara. Basara deserves a reboot. We only got 13 episodes in 1998 and they're not even like really easily available to watch anywhere. Actually, I don't even think you can watch them anywhere. The 13 episodes only covered the first five volumes. I think I've heard that there's a lot of cut content from those five volumes as well, but we deserve a good adventure action shoujo series that has the best enemies to lovers of all time. And you know, I would be a little skeptical of a Basara reboot because of what they did to Seven Seeds. I, I still want it. I want a Basara reboot. We need it. I need to see Shuri animated. I need that man animated again. <laughs> it's just a fantastic series. If you guys haven't read Basara, please read Basara. So good. Um, and then demand some sort of reboot from an animation company. I don't even know. Ask any of them. And for the last question, what preferably shortish and or complete shoujo say manga or anime would you recommend to people looking to get into either demographic? So I'm not sure how short short you would want it. I think my first thought would be Wake Up Sleeping Beauty. That is a fantastic six volume series. It's a great drama, kind of supernatural romance series by the same author as A Condition Called Love. So just a fantastic series. It's very contained. It does exactly what it is meant to do. It's a nice short story. I would really recommend it for anyone who likes drama, who likes a little bit of supernatural and romance as well. Most of my shoujo series that I love are like super long. So I always have a hard time being like, a short series uh, is 10 volumes short. <laughs> all right, and that was all of the questions. Uh, thank you guys so much. This was actually super fun. Like I said, I was really not expecting to get questions that were challenging in a way, but you guys were really like, let's ask some deep shit. <laughs> like I kind of mentioned, I wanted to do this video as like a fun little break to relieve myself of some manga burnout. However, I am working on some other videos, um, a couple that I have in mind just for those who have stuck around till the end. I want to do a female isekai video at some point, and I want to do a Chihaya Furu overall comprehensive video of the entire series. And I'm also thinking of doing a video on the intimacy of shoujo romance. So look forward to those, possibly within the next two, three months. Um, definitely gonna try and get that Shihaya Furu one out by the end of December when we get the last volume. <gasps> so yeah, thank you guys for watching this. It was a ton of fun to do. I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Like I said, this is unscripted and I kind of ramble a lot. I say so and um and like a lot. Thank you, my hojos for watching. I appreciate you all. Read Shihaya Furu and I will see you guys in the next video.